The Santa Barbara oil spill occurred in January and February 1969 in the Santa Barbara Channel, just off the coast from Summerland. It was the largest oil spill in the United States waters by that time, and now ranks third after the 2010 Deepwater Horizon and the 1989 Exxon Valdez spills. It remains the largest oil spill to have occurred in the waters off California. The source of the spill was a blowout on January 28, 1969, six miles from the coast, on Union Oil's Platform A in the Dos Cuadras offshore oil field. Within a 10-day period, an estimated 80 to 100,000 barrels of crude oil spilled into the channel and onto the beaches of Santa Barbara County, fouling the coastline from Goleta to Ventura, as well as the northern shores of the four northern Channel Islands. The spill had a significant impact on marine life in the channel, killing an estimated 3,500 seabirds, as well as marine animals such as dolphins, elephant seals, and sea lions. On the morning of January 28, 1969, workers drilling the fifth well, A-21, reached its final depth of almost 3,500 feet, attaining this depth in only 14 days. Of this depth, only the top 239 feet had been fitted with a steel conductor casing. The rest was to be fitted with one once the drill bit was out. After the workers pulled the drill bit out, with some difficulty, an enormous spout of oil, gas, and drilling mud burst into the air into the rig, splattering the men with filth. Several of them attempted to screw a blowout preventer onto the pipe but against pressure of over a 1,000 pounds per square inch, this proved to be impossible. All workers, except for those engaged in the plugging attempt, were evacuated due to the danger of explosion from the abundant natural gas blown from the hole. Finally, the workers tried the method of last resort, dropping the remaining drill pipe almost half a mile long into the hole, then crushing the top of the well pipe from the sides with a pair of blind rams which are enormous steel blocks slamming together with force sufficient to stop anything from escaping from the well. It took 13 minutes from the time of the initial blowout to the time the blind rams were activated. Only then did the workers both on the rig and in boats nearby notice the increase in bubbling at the ocean's surface, hundreds of feet from the rig. Plugging the well at the top had failed to stop the blowout, which was now tearing through the ocean floor in several places. The disturbances on the surface of the ocean, which began to appear only 14 minutes after the blowout, expanded during the next 24 hours. The largest was a dramatic boil-up about 800 feet east of the platform. Another smaller disturbance broke the ocean's surface about 300 feet west of the platform and several smaller areas of bubbling could be observed around the platform itself. Even after the well was further plugged at the platform with drilling mud during the next week, these continued to boil up. Investigators later determined that the oil and gas was emerging uncontrolled through five separate rips in the ocean floor. Workers were finally able to control the leakage, at least to a minimal degree, on February 6th. Seepage from rifts in the ocean floor continued well into 1970. The environmental effects of the spill were immediate and dramatic. At least 3,700 birds died, those being the ones that were counted. An unknown number died unseen. Some marine mammals, such as sea lions and elephant seals, died, although the numbers are unknown. The aftermath of the spill inspired then-Senator Gaylord Nelson of Wisconsin to organize what became known as Earth Day, when he succeeded in amassing some 20 million people to the cause of educating people on issues related to the environment on April 20, 1970, with the help of Dennis Hayes, the organizer of the first Earth Day, and U.S. Representative Pete McCluskey of California. <laughs> 